Are there any popular herbs that you think people should be wary of, you know, avoid or not use? I think berberine is not for everyone. Mm, say more. I think, um, yeah, you know, it's people are looking to berberine as a way to help resensitize their cells to insulin. So they're looking to berberine as kind of like a natural metformin, um, a way to help balance their blood sugar and reduce insulin resistance. And while it is able to do this, it is heavily antimicrobial and is going to have an effect against SIBO mm. for many people. And if that person is not ready for a strong antimicrobial ingested daily, if their other elimination pathways aren't open, if they're constipated and not having bowel movements every day, if they are someone who needs liver support and that's not being taken into account, I feel like it can cause more side effects than benefit. And it's known and to cause GI side ways. effects. Yeah, I mean, the, the gastrointestinal upset is one of the more reported side effects for berberine, for sure. Yeah, and just in general, kind of like a backlog of um, of just toxins that you're not able to release because you're killing off all these pathogens, you know, then you're needing to kind of get rid of their waste products, but your liver pathways and bowels are not necessarily open. It's It's doing a lot more than just resensitizing your cells to insulin. So I think that there are better botanicals to use, even things like cinnamon that are still going to give you a wonderful effect in lowering postprandial glucose and resensitizing you to insulin. That's not going to have quite as strong of an antimicrobial effect. Gotcha. This is also where <laughs> these things are a little bit complicated because I, I'm thinking of, I believe it's Marty Ross who recommends cinnamon, oregano, and I'm blanking on the third, but it's a, <laughs> it's a three herb combo for chronic Lyme. Interesting. I mean, cinnamon is antifungal. I'll give it that. It's just, I just don't find it to be nearly as strong as something like berberine. Someone can even just start adding cinnamon to their food and have a really helpful right. response when it comes to managing their blood sugar. So it's like, you don't have to go as far as like, now I'm going to dose myself with a bunch of berberine each day. You can kind of imbalance things more than you help them by doing that blindly, especially without a practitioner. Yeah. I mean, it was admittedly news to me to see cinnamon ranked as like primary antimicrobial. Yeah. So maybe there's some synergy there, or maybe it's just they were using a formula that had cinnamon and maybe more of the antimicrobial actions from the other two things. And sorry, audience, I can't, I can't think of the third. It's oregano, cinnamon, oh, and clove, um, which again, to me, clove, I did not associate as a strong antimicrobial, but, um, you know, maybe it's mostly the I mean, oregano. cinnamon's high... Yeah, cinnamon's high in essential oils, high in cinnamon aldehydes and other things like that. So essential oils are always going to be antimicrobial. So it's not impossible. And I think the synergy is probably very much part of it. But right. yeah, I just don't find people to have like die off effects from cinnamon, whereas berberine, <laughs> That's fair, yeah. you're often going right. to get that. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, anything you want to say in close? I mean, please tell the audience more. You have a, a really big Instagram following much um, much of your page is just super insightful and intuitive uh, lessons or, or musings. You have a line of herbs you've developed. So where can people connect with you and, and learn more about what you offer? Yeah, thank you. I've, I've certainly cataloged my journey for the last eight or nine years on my Instagram. It's at organic underscore Olivia. Um, nowadays, I really mostly post my podcast clips because I'm kind of passing the torch to the next generation of experts and wanting to give them the airtime on my platform. But you can go back through my highlights and archives. And I have a lot of things that I've shared from my own healing journey and just herbal insights for you. And then you can go to my website, organiclivia.com. I have a ton of helpful blog posts that I've written throughout the years on all different herbs. And that's where you can find my full herbal line, Organic Olivia. I have an adaptogen blend that is very neutral. I have digestive bitters. I have um, an anti-anxiety blend called Peace Juice. So a lot of the things that we talk about, I have formulated for in a way that is meant to help the maximum amount of people possible. Awesome. Uh, well, Olivia, I appreciate you taking the time and it's been a really fun conversation. I, I think herbs, like we've been outlining, have so much potential to help people and they're so available. They're so simple. So I would definitely encourage people to check out your work, do some experimentation, whether it be catnip, chamomile, whatever it is, and see if you can use these herbs that have been used for so long to help sort of fine tune your health. So just been great. And uh, thank you again. Thanks so much for the space to have the convo.